if they commence to have an experience. I mean, they talk to it, it talks back, they laugh, they cry, it's emotional, you know, and it might not be quite that dramatic, but, but it's not just a gimmick of being able to get these words and, and do something based on them. It's not just that gimmick. It's actually lighting up this more human experience. We're, uh, we're talking about, we're trying to emulate a relationship that we see in real life, trying to model what we see in real life. You and I right here, right now, right. we're talking human to human. Yep. And we're trying to put that into practice on the devices where I'm talking human to human. Of course, it's not ever going to be as as natural as talking human to human, I, but well, it, you don't know. It's pretty close. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, science fiction is covered as well. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. We're heading there. The cool thing about this is that there are. This means for you as a developer that there are really big UI rewards for implementing speech. Like if you go implement a, a new uh, accordion style menu, your users will go, "Oh, that's easier." But if you go implement really well done speech, yep. your users will be blown away. It's it's amazing with the hundreds of thousands of apps that are available in a store. It it, it baffles me that there's not more apps that actually use speech properly. Yeah, and they're coming. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this MVA. Yeah, because I feel like there's so many capabilities that developers are not exploiting, and you guys basically need to go out there, think of a good idea, and I think the word gimmick that you use is very important because. Don't don't fall into the trap of just building an app that's going to be a gimmick. I mean, we're we're in a day and age now where users are expecting a very mature experience on their phone, and uh, the gimmick again is it's going to be one of those things where for the first five minutes it's going to be funny, but they're going to quick quickly tire of it. Yeah, I always tell people uh, think about the escalator test, and the escalator test is this: You're, you've gotten you've landed at an airport. You get to the top of an escalator, and by the time you get to the bottom of the escalator, you want to be able to um, look at where your colleague is is staying tonight, where where you and your colleague are staying. Make sure you're checked in at your hotel. Look for restaurants nearby. Book yep. a table at the restaurant, and then set up a meeting with your colleague at that table that night. Like this, this whole end-to-end -end scenario. This this spans anybody's individual app or the system overall. You're using TripIt and you're using uh, you know, all these other apps. You're using all this whole suite of apps to get this whole task done and you want it to happen before they get to the bottom of the escalator. And there's the most hope, in my opinion, in, in the speech interface to be able to get that done. Because you, if you can really recognize uh, a sentence, you can determine what it is overall that a user is trying to do. And if you can turn that on for them, they're going to be. Very happy. Yeah, it'd be great. You get to the uh, escalator and then you go, Cortana, tell me about Jeremy's plans in San Francisco. There you go. And immediately everything should fall into place. Yeah. And then you spend the rest of the ride on the escalator reading about it. Yeah. Instead of looking for it. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Okay, I told you that speech is critical. Sometimes it really is a critical mode of interacting with your phone. We all know about the dangers of texting and driving. Speech can keep people safe, drivers and passengers safe on the road. That's gigantic. It can also make technology a lot more accessible for a lot more people. When we yep. talk about accessibility, we're talking about like um, accessibility for people in with other languages, with, uh, with fewer capabilities, with disabilities, um, all across the board making it accessible. And it's also a good tool for just general occupational therapy, like speech therapy and things like that. Or learning in general. Yeah, learning in but general. But I, I cannot overemphasize this point more. I mean, we... Speech, as we said, can be a lot of fun, but speech, I feel, is something that's super important for app developers and for users as well, because I see it all the time when I drive around in New Jersey, and I see people like driving 60, 70 down the highway, and they're looking at their phones. Yeah. It, it kills me. And, and the thing is, it, they can kill someone. And I find that super critical, because in a way, we're we're kind of responsible for this. You know, we're the developers, we created these apps, and these apps that are so good that people just can't put them down. And now we tell them, don't use it when you're driving. But we all know that people do it. And I try not to, but I, I, everybody knows if they've done it or not. The point is, as developers, I feel that it's our responsibility to make our apps safer. So if your app, if you think as a developer, yes, I can see my users, wanting to use this app when they're driving, especially if it's like an app, an app that's used for communication or for any kind of social interaction or you integrate with some kind of social network. Yes, chances are people might try to use it when they're driving or even walking around the city or something. That's where you have to say as a developer, I will implement speech the right way. Yeah. So they can they listen to the app, they can talk to the app, 
while keeping their eyes on the road and their hands on the wheel. And this way, you, you can feel better about yourself, about maybe just saving some lives out there just by creating better apps. Yeah. Yeah, we'll look at some good points on that. Next point is that speech is fun. It is. It's fun yeah, to it's, it's fun. fun to talk to your phone. A lot of these <laughs> scenarios are just a blast. So, you know, some of the speech scenarios that you go through are not to make a person more productive or get tasks done. They're just for fun. They're just pure whimsy, and that's okay. Because if it makes a person enjoy your app and download it and rate it, then that's what you're after, right? Yeah, and that's important too. Because let, imagine like you're working with, you know, we have coworkers and everything. If you have a coworker who's like super efficient and all they do is work, 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 and everything, great. They're, they're, they're a great team worker and everything. But at some point, you're like, what do you like? What do you do? You know, what do you do after work? Are you married? Do you have kids? You know, you want to learn a little more about people because we're, we're not working with machines. We're working with human beings. When it comes to the app, if the app is talking, we also want something that can be a little fun as well. Yeah. Because if it's just like cut and dry features, information, and everything, you're like, yeah, okay, but... I don't feel the connection. Yeah. And I don't click. Yeah. Yeah. We got to keep it fun. Okay. So speech is really good when there are certain things that are true. So it, when you need another arm, <laughs> like you're trying to cook or, or hold stuff or play right. a game or whatever, speech is great. It's when it's easier and more natural for you to use your voice. Like when you're laying down in bed, so you've only got one arm and it's a little bit awkward or, or when you're trying to set an appointment and it's, it's awkward to go through the UI for creating an appointment because there's a lot of yep. steps. Speech is awesome when, when typing is just difficult because you're on an Xbox or a tablet or a phone or whatever. When you're distracted because you're driving, actually walking is it's, it's really difficult to use your phone while you're walking. Okay. It's not as dangerous to walk and text, but yeah, it is I, almost as difficult. And it can also be dangerous. I can tell you in New York City. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, at least I, you're only going to get yourself run over. Yeah. And so obviously when you're skiing, I mean, skiing? have you tried texting and skiing? I, I would love to see your <laughs> algorithm that deals with the background noise. I'm a skier as well. And <laughs> you appear to be skiing right now. Would you like to... <laughs> hey, it could happen. It could there's happen. A, there's a tree coming up. Yeah, and there needs to be some whimsy, right? Uh, also, when you're trying to multitask. So when you're, when you're looking at something in a browser and you just want to share it. it, you don't want to jump out to a different UI. Or when you're working and maybe somebody calls or somebody interrupts and you just want to pause the music. You don't want to jump over to another UI. So pause my music is just an excellent scenario right there. So yep. speech is great in a lot of cases. Think about those. Okay, so I've introduced you to speech. And of course, we didn't go into depth. That's what the job of the next five modules is. And now I'm going to introduce you to Cortana herself, okay? Actually, wait a minute. Let me let Cortana introduce herself. So let's just bring Cortana onto the stage here. Now, what I've got is um, my Windows phone. And this isn't, this isn't my Windows. Oh, and I just opened something. This isn't my Windows phone. I don't have this sparse of icon. I've got far more going on on my start screen. And in fact, that's kind of why I'm using an alternate phone here. So. Um, but I've got Cortana on this phone, and she knows about me, and, and we're just going to get a little bit introduced here. So, hi, Cortana. Hi. There we go. So, Cortana knows how to greet. That's, that's, that's it. excellent. That's a simple greeting. Any, any AI system needs to be able to say hi. That's awesome. Uh, do notice, though, when I start talking, there's a really intelligent algorithm. That, that, the, the guts behind it are really, really amazing, actually that allow you to see the, uh, the words as they get recognized. And you can even see that as it's trying to figure out what it would, what it would be, it uses the context to determine it. So let me just try that same thing again and, and watch what is recognized at the bottom of the screen here. Hi, Cortana. So you see these little, like, you know, the, the words going by, and then it figures out, this makes sense, this is what I'm going to use, this is what I'm going to recognize. Now, this happens in the cloud. And that's an important consideration, right? Right, and it's, it's kind of interesting because I was talking to some of the architects that work on our, our Bing team that work with Cortana. And what do you I mean was, Bing I, team that work on it? So well, Bing is behind all this? Yeah, actually, that's a good point because, yeah, the, the brains of Cortana actually are all in Bing. So Bing powers Cortana. Which is good news. And so it's all the cloud services in Bing. So everything that you can find in Bing, Cortana knows about this stuff. That's why she's just getting smarter and smarter every day. And the cool thing is that when you're doing speech recognition there, when you're talking to your phone. See, it's funny how now we're just focusing on what Cortana says, but we're just assuming that, hey, she'll understand because the speech recognition, it's that good. Yeah, yeah, it's real good. And it's really good. the way it works is that when you talk to your phone, 
it's using a local speech recognizer. And we're going to look at this uh, on how you can actually use it as a developer. But then it's listening and it's actually streaming live. So whatever you're saying, it's trying to recognize it and it's streaming it straight to the server. And then at the same time, there's a local recognizer and there's a cloud recognizer both working. And at some point, the cloud recognizer, of course, has access to like machine learning algorithms and tons of machines in the cloud. It can say, okay, I got it. I know, I know what he or she wants. And then it will just send send it back to the user and say to the phone and say, this is what they were trying to say. Yeah. And then of course, follow up with a response. Yeah. It's extremely powerful. Well, let's follow up and let Cortana tell us some more. Cortana, can you tell us about yourself? I'm not much of a swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us something more? OK. So this is what happens. You mentioned that this is powered by Bing. It's backed by Bing. And anytime you say something, which is obviously very possible, that Cortana doesn't really make any sense out of, or you know, she hasn't been programmed to respond to, then she drops down to a generic search, a which is search. helpful, because a lot of times you, this, this Bing search is going to have the information that you were looking for. Right, because I mean, the information that you might be asking about could be extremely specific. Or, or sometimes it's not like a direct answer. Yeah. You know? So you, you basically would need to sift through maybe a few pages to find your answer. Maybe it's an article about a piece of code or something. So it's not like Cortana is going to start telling you, oh, this is how you, you write this piece of code. Yeah. So it's important to have like a fallback plan, which is doing a Bing a search. generic search, which is a good plan, yeah. And I want to point out that, um, first of all, Cortana is learning a lot about us. And we'll talk about how that works in just a second. But also, we're kind of learning about Cortana and, and how she works. And the fact that there are certain things that we can say, certain ways that we can say it that will help her to understand it. And there are certain phrases, there are certain um, speech scenarios that where, where Cortana is listening for a follow-on sentence. So I can ask her something, she can respond, and then I can say something else and it will be a continuation or it will take the context of what you're using. And so you'll learn how those work and I'll show you some examples. But let's just go ahead and uh, try this again. So let's say, can you tell us about yourself? I'm Cortana. <coughs> I help you get things done. And when you tell me the things that interest you, I put them in my notebook so I can make suggestions and keep you up to date. There we go. Uh, yeah, better was, better was, than I could have said it. Yeah, that was very specific. <laughs> yeah. That's who Cortana is. Do you know who I am? You are Code Foster. Ah. Oh, wow. So she, she knows who I am. She knows your nickname, even. Wow. Wait, on, on this machine, whenever I set it up, I told her who I am, and I log in with a live account and um, with a Microsoft account and, and get all my credentials. And so she knows who I am, and that's how she can start remembering things. Th does Cortana me. follow you on Twitter? I think she does, yes. But I think a lot of people should follow you on Twitter now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about me? More personal, see? Yeah. Well, I have my notebook, so I know what you know you've let me know, you know? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> She's fun. <laughs> She's fun, yeah. This is a good example of an, of an answer that contains some fun, some whimsy, right? Well, let's ask, what can I say? Here are some things I can help you do. Now, this is a really important question for you to remember because the, the what can I say is a really good landing page to help you find out all the different things that she can help you with. It's also available by just clicking see more on that Cortana screen. Now, watch this. It's showing me all of the kind of core things that can be done. But if I scroll down, uh, oh, it's not going to work on this because I don't have any apps installed right now oh, to right. support it. But we'll get that set up for that module. But it's actually going to show you the apps that you can talk to as well. So that'll, that'll be exciting, and we'll get to that in just a second. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a number of, of the core speech functions or scenarios that Cortana will handle. And they all kind of follow into, they call, kind of all fall under these three categories. That is communication, uh, remembering things, and finding things. So most of the scenarios, this is what Cortana is good at helping us do. Communicate, remember, and, and find things. So All with a great personality as well. Uh, yeah, all with a little bit of whimsy. Yep. <laughs> okay, so let's go through uh, a few scenarios. First, let's look at some communications. Okay. So I'm going to say to Cortana, text my wife, I'll be home in 30 minutes. Sure. What's your wife's name? Okay, now I canceled out of that because I didn't want to follow up yet. I want to let you know what's actually going on here. I told Cortana a nickname. I said my wife, 
And she is smart enough to recognize that as a relationship, but say, I don't know who your wife is. Right. And so she's asking a follow-on question. And now I can say the name of my wife. I don't have the, the number programmed into this phone right now, so we're not going to follow on to this. But I could just say my wife's name, and it would fill that in, and then she would remember that. And from now on, whenever I say my wife, I don't have to go through this follow-on scenario. It's just always going to refer to her. It's like a personal assistant. Let's say that you have a personal assistant and then on the first day he or she comes over and everything and you get to know each other. And of course over time they will know like who you're married to, who your kids are and things like that. So that, that's also part of the personality. The personality is not just there for fun. It's also there for all the useful features where you don't want to have to say your wife's name every time. You, right. you can just say my wife and she'll know who it is. All right, let's try another one. Call Nick Landry. Okay, call Nick Landry Mobile. Is that right? That's right. Call Nick Landry Mobile. Is that right? Yes. All right. Calling Nick Landry Mobile. And there we go. And without a SIM card, that that scenario oh, yeah, right. is actually going to work. No but, this one. Uh, but we'll show you that um, a, a complete scenario like that in just a second. Um, so I already showed you the um, text my wife. I can say, obviously I can combine call and then a relationship. So I could say, call my son. Sure. What's your son's name? Once again, it recognizes that relationship, there prompts me for the name. Now let's try a complete one. I'm going to 